Welcome to part six of the build. And in this part of the build, I'm just going to go ahead and pull out some of my caster blocks. And you have your choice of a lot of different caster blocks. There's like 25 degree and 20 degree, I think. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the stock 30 degree caster block. And I'm just going to check to see my uh, kingpin fits in there correctly. And it does, so I'm off to a great start. Um, if you're going to just run through, like, run your standard stock uh, uh, factory team or, or RTR ones, uh, you could skip the step. But I'm going to go ahead and do the 12 millimeter uh, hex adapter. Uh, I just like the to run the uh, J Concepts hazard tires. So, I mean, because I'm such a huge fan of the hazard tires, I'm going to go ahead and go, go through with this uh, hex conversion. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put this uh, put this uh, steering hex thing on here. So I'm just going to make sure that this fits. And I just just because I love the uh, hex conversion so much, uh, it's going to give me a little bit more trouble in in uh, building out the steps. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that uh, the hinge pin is fitting in grid. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, screw this in. Just uh, finalize this. Uh, um, I'm sorry, not screw this in, but just put in this uh, uh, king pin in here. And uh, remember, like when you're putting in the king pin uh, on, on this step, uh, you don't need the spacers. So just making sure that this is working out good. And that is that's a good step there. So making sure that the uh, king pin is fitting in. I still don't have that that size of hex allen wrench, so I'm still using the stock uh, hex allen wrench that came with my RTR. So I'm using that to screw it in, and just uh, I'll out of frame there a little bit. Um, also, I'm just going to thread in that hinge pin. Um, it's taking the it looks like it's falling out, so I'm going to go ahead and have to uh, push that back in again here, and it's just taking me a little time to make sure that goes in uh, the part is a little bit tight fitting but once it once it goes in it should be all great and everything so once again I'm just taking my time making sure that the part is is going through okay uh, the other thing I you need to make sure is that uh, make sure that you're putting on your parts and and at the at the correct orientation uh, too often it's uh, it's a, because the it it may not be immediate like where you're threading in the part uh, you might have the orientation wrong so you might uh, finish screwing in the whole part and not realize that you you've done so at the wrong orientation and you have to then like unscrew everything in and put everything back to normal so just remember uh, double check the orientation before you start screwing in at this stage and once again it's just I man I really gotta figure out what what screw size that is and get the right hex allen wrench uh, just really difficult for threading in with the uh, stock tool <laughs> and then uh, you see it's a uh, keep dropping the tool and and uh, messing up but I'm not going to torture you with this part let's go on with the uh, next step uh, just so you know that the stock size of this tool it's a uh, 256 by 1 8 is the uh, button uh, hex head, head screw there and uh, just so you know it's uh, uh, that's the size I'm, I'm using to lock in that outer or that king pin there and pretty much I got both sides done and next part um, pretty much I'm putting on the uh, dust covers for the ball heads and the other half is going to be the uh, uh, ball bearings. It's uh, ball bearings are going to be placed in here on the uh, stock RTR cars without the hex conversion. The ball bearings are actually sitting inside that front tire, so that makes it so that the uh, front tire and the rear tire cannot be interchanged on the uh, on the stock RTR. You actually have to get the uh, different front tire and a different back tire, and with this uh, conversion, it's pretty cool because you could actually interchange front and rear tires so if you're 
if your rear tires have worn down, you, you could move them up to the front, for example. And just as an example, and also you could also run uh, many different types of tires with the hex conversion because suddenly you're more compatible with the uh, rest of the world. And of course, uh, the great thing about doing this conversion is that, of course, you could run the J Concepts hazard tires as well. So I've moved in the the uh, 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 the the ball bearings in there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is move in the uh, dust covers, and I'm just going to have to open up this bag of dust covers and put in the uh, dust covers over the ball studs. And I'm going to show you this part here, the axle shims. These are really good for spacing. So if you're off by a little spacing, you could always add in another shim and you could actually increase the spacing or, or width of, of your tires. So it's a kind of an invaluable tool in a sense. And it's also nice so that you can make sure that you're using the proper uh, roar rules with. So uh, if you're off a little bit, I'd suggest uh, using, using some of those shims. So I'm going to go ahead and place the shim right over the, the, uh, the front axle there and making sure that it's, uh, it's fitting in there okay. And then the uh, next step is going to be to put in the hex adapter in there. So the 12 millimeter hex adapters in there. And let's open up this bag here. And pretty much it's, it's got these, uh, um, these little hinge pins. So you have the uh, front axle hinge pins in here with this bag. And when you open this bag, just be careful because there's uh, many small parts in here too. And it looks like it's just four gigantic like, like uh, pins there. So it's like just making sure that that fits okay. All right. So I'm going to just thread in the, that, that uh, hinge pin there. And what I like to do is just grab the, uh, grab some pliers there and just kind of just thread that in. Uh, I'm not going to push down too hard because you actually could crush in, you could actually crush that part. So I'm just going to lightly just hold it and then try to thread it in. And sorry, just a little bit out of frame here, but it's uh, just trying to get this uh, hinge pin just kind of aligned more in the middle here. So once that's aligned more in the middle, I should be all set. And then I just grab the the hex adapter and then just push it through and just slide it in. And then that's all it's going to be. So sorry about that. I'm out of frame here. I'm just actually uh, taking some time to slide that in. Sometimes the the front hinge pin isn't isn't really spaced too great so then uh, when you try to put in the that hex adapter it doesn't quite fit so just take your time make sure that it is kind of spaced evenly and then you could get that front hex adapter in there to fit okay and check it out this part is is uh, nicely constructed we have that part set together so next thing we have to do is we're going to go ahead and and tie it to the uh, front arms which is what this is all about and we see some of the part numbers there and we're going to go ahead and take the uh, hinge pin and uh, just try to align it up so that everything is going to be fitting okay so let's get this camera in, in uh, focus here so we can see what's going on and pretty much we're going to have to put in our ball stud at the top and then on the bottom we're going to have to put in a part number 4449 washer and then I'm also going to use a, uh, I mean, not washer, but 4449 nut. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of these part numbers here. So there's the 4449 nut. And then uh, we also have the uh, dust covers. So let's get that part number for you here. So those are the part numbers and parts that I'll be using. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this bag of ball studs here. And we'll start uh, putting in this part. And it's always kind of funny. It's just these little packets of parts that you end up with at the end of the day. And I'm going to use these uh, nylon washers for uh, to to put. I'm going to put two of these nylon washers right below each of the uh, ball studs. 
So the kind of like vibration damp and uh, let me do my steering. So let's just put these two of these guys at the bottom here. And that's going to be good. And I'm going to grab my part. It's going to thread this one right over it. There we go. And just get that part right over it. And I'm going to grab my 449 nut. And uh, without the nut, you're, uh, uh, what happens if you, if you don't put in this nut, uh, the, the ball stud actually comes out and then uh, you can't steer at all. So you, you really need to put in this locking nut in here. So I'm making sure that the nut fits. It's going to hold it down so the nut doesn't fall out. And I'm going to finish uh, screwing in the uh, ball stud. So I'm going to get it a few turns make sure that it's holding. And then uh, turn, start turning in the uh, ball stud completely. So once you have the nut and inside there, uh, the ball stud will not come out. And you're, you have a pretty much uh, a very tight uh, steering. So just making sure that this part is going in okay. There we go. Making sure that is nice and tight. It's not loose. Um, you could actually, perhaps, you could, you could actually put in like a like the uh, stainless steel or aluminum uh, uh, washers in here as well too. So you could actually use the uh, a different uh, washer in there too. I'm just doing like a little experiment to see if these work any better. Uh, then you put in the uh, dust cap and. And uh, once we got the dust cap on, we could actually uh, put this on the uh, front A arms. There we go. Everything is nice. Everything's looking good. Looking like it fits. And that is awesome. Very cool. All right. So let's go ahead and put this on the front arms. And to do this, make sure that you have the hinge pins. Uh, if you don't, go ahead and run on and get some hinge pins. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this bag of hinge pins. And once again, I'm, I have this bag of hinge pins because I'm uh, building out my uh, SCX 60 CF from scratch. And just making sure that, there we go, that's in focus. Okay, so then we're running the, the hinge pin here, making sure that this is set here. So that is working. Grabbing like a spacer. And I'm just going to put a spacer right up in, in the front here. Uh, I found that if I didn't have the spacer, everything runs a little too loose. So I uh, just want to make sure that everything is, is fitting nicely. Um, and that uh, uh, I like to put in the spacer there because uh, it also, if I don't have a spacer in there, it's, uh, it's hard to, harder to steer. Uh, so if you are if you do break the uh, A-arms and stuff, uh, uh, and you lost a spacer, be sure to go through the trouble to, to get a spacer in there. And let me uh, let me just try to space it in there again. And uh, once again, I just kind of have trouble putting in the hinge pins in, in these vehicles. Uh, just a little too clumsy and uncoordinated to, to do this really well. But let's go ahead and just kind of push it in. Just gonna keep pushing and pushing till this uh, goes through. There we go. Grab the uh, needle nose here, and we're just gonna uh, apply a little thrust to push this through. Whoops! <laughs> Everything came loose. All right, let's try this again. Sorry, I didn't mean to torture you guys. Uh, pretty much, is almost this step is almost done. I just gotta like put in this hinge pin and then thread through the front hinge pin locking screw and we're all set with this step. There we go. Looks like it's threaded in and then we'll just apply the locking screw. Once the screw is set, uh, locking screw is set, uh, you should have this axis, nice axis of movement and you're pretty much all set for the next step. So and also uh, just so you know I put in the locking nut on the front axle there so that I hold in the uh, hex hex adapter in there. 
Thanks a lot for watching and get ready for step seven.